Hello, you welcome to another exciting edition of this Bible study program. My name is Joseph Mark with Leste Gariva, and I'm a gospel preacher in the Church of Christ. Today, I'm here with my friend, Patrick Donahue from Onsville, Alabama. And uh, we're going to be talking about the question of the deity of Christ. Was Jesus created or uh, is, is he God? So we're going to be looking at that today. Uh, Patrick, how are you doing today? Great. I'm looking forward to this discussion, this study, Leslie. I appreciate you doing it. It's really good to, have, to be able to examine these issues and uh, question what people teach on things and try to figure out what the Bible actually does teach on all of these issues. Thank you for doing it. Appreciate you being willing to do this. It's a good subject. Thanks. I love having both, hearing the, these issues, talking about both sides and question, trying to contend for the faith on these issues. I, I think you're doing really good to do these things. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really happy to have you on here today to talk about this um, as well. So I want to look at um, um, the, the question of the deity of Christ. You know, I uh, want you to tell us from the scriptural perspective uh, whether or not uh, Jesus Christ, would it be possible that there was a time, you know, he wasn't existing and, you know, uh, he, he was brought forth or he came to be in existence as a result of some, you know, creation of God. All right, but before we go further, can you please give us a background? What do we mean when we talk about the deity of Christ? What does that mean? What are we talking about? When we say that Jesus affirmed that Jesus is deity, we're simply affirming that he's divine, that he's God. Now, we're not saying he's God the Father, but we're saying he's God divine like the Father. And I think John 1.1 1, 1 helps illustrate for us what we're talking about. John chapter one, verse one says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was, was God. Well, verse 14 goes on to say, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So we know that the word here is talking about Jesus Christ. It's not talking about the scriptures here. It's talking about a name for Jesus Christ. It says that he was with God, which means he's not God the father. If I'm with you or I'm with my wife, that means you're different than me, or my wife is different than me. He was with God. He's different than God the Father, but he was God, not God the Father. We've already established he's not God the Father when it says he was with God. He was God, meaning he is deity himself. Jesus is God, just like the Father, and you would expect that. If I have a son, Leslie, and I'm human, what would you expect my son to be? What species? To be like you, of course, You to be human. Yeah, what Human, that's right. So if yeah. God has a son, you would expect his son to also be God, deity. Now, there are at least eight or ten passages in the Bible that prove conclusively Jesus was God, deity. I don't mean God the Father, but deity, divine. For example, John 20, verse 28, when Thomas, sometimes called Doubting Thomas, finally sees Jesus as Christ, the wounds in his hands and everything, he answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Now, Lord doesn't necessarily mean God. That just means boss. But he calls him God. And Jesus basically says, hey, because you blessed are, you, you, you believe this, that's great. But blessed are those who believe it who have not seen me. So he's, he's agreeing with Thomas. He's saying, Thomas, you're blessed for believing this, that I am God. So Thomas is calling Jesus God, divine, deity. Jesus accepts it. How about Acts 20, verse 28? It says, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he, that would be God, hath purchased with his own blood. The he, the pronoun, refers back to God. That's the last antecedent. So he's saying God purchased the church with his own blood. Well, that's not talking about God the Father. He never had any blood. He didn't have a physical body. This has got, about, got to be talking about Jesus because he purchased the church with his blood. And it calls him God. Doesn't mean he's God the Father. It means he's divine. He is deity, just like God the Father. How about Isaiah 9, verse 6? It says, For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This is obviously talking about Jesus, a prophecy about this child being born. And what is he going to be called? The Mighty God. Jesus is God himself. Again, he's not God the Father, but he is the mighty God. Now, Leslie, I'm digressing a little bit here. You talked about 
what, what was Jesus created. This calls Jesus the everlasting father. That means that Jesus ex existed all the way back through eternity. He was never created or else he wouldn't be called the everlasting father. He's only called the everlasting father because he existed from eternity past and to eternity in the future. And then another verse, Hebrews chapter one, verse eight. It says, but unto the son, he saith, talking about God, God says to the son, thy throne, O God, is forever. Now, I would think that God the father would know if Jesus is God, if he's deity. If he calls the son deity or God, then that would surely mean that Jesus was God because God the father actually called him God. You see what I mean, Leslie? You right. see how those four, five passages actually all of them prove conclusively that Jesus is divine. He's God, just like God the Father. We sometimes call him, for lack of a better term, God the Son, because it's to show that he's God, deity, but he's not the same as God the Father. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You've actually um, showed from these four or five passages of the scriptures that Jesus is God. So the Son of God is God, the Son of a man is a man or a human is human. The son of a lion, like one of our teachers would say, is a lion. The son of a cow is a cow. Is cow. So the son of God is God. So that, that makes sense. Uh, I want to come down to uh, the discussion proper. Um, I think there is no doubt about him being God now. But from the Bible teaching, and I want you to pay careful attention to this question. From the Bible teaching, is it possible that there was a time that Jesus wasn't existing? Now we agree that he's God. Was there could, could it be possible that there was a time he wasn't existing? So the father, you, you, you mentioned that he is not God the Father. So we have God the Father, and then we have another person which is God the Son. So could it be possible that there was a time that his son wasn't existing, just like your son, Patrick, wasn't existing at a point in time, you had to give birth to him. So could it be possible that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, wasn't existing at a point in time, and then God the Father had to bring him into existence, uh, you know, like every other created being? Is, is it possible from what we, we, we've studied in the scriptures? I don't think so. I'm looking at a couple of passages here. We've already seen Isaiah 9, 6, which calls him the everlasting Father, which shows he wasn't brought into existence. But one question that just came to my mind, Leslie, Okay. If Jesus came into existence, God created him. How did the Holy Spirit come into being? Was he created too? Was the Holy Spirit a created being? Or is he God from all eternity? But let's look at a couple more passages. As I said, we've already looked at Isaiah 9, 6. Micah 5, 2, a prophecy about where Jesus would be born. It says, but thou, Bethlehem, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee, being out of Bethlehem, the city, shall come forth unto me, that is, to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Well, we know from the New Testament, this is talking about the Christ. Jesus Christ would come from Bethlehem. Now notice, it says about Jesus Christ in prophecy, it says, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. Okay. Now, the footnote in my King James Version says, for everlasting, it says, from eternity. In other words, Time all the way back to eternity, infinitely, infinite number of years backwards. Now, it is true, Leslie, and you mentioned this this morning in that email. It is true that this term in the Hebrew, everlasting, can mean till the end of this age. Okay. But it doesn't mean that going backwards. Mm. What age would it be going backwards to start with? Going backwards, it would mean, as the footnote says, till to eternity. It says from everlasting, from eternity. This proves conclusively that Jesus was never created because if he was created, he would not have existed from eternity. There would be a time point when he started. No, Jesus is just like God the Father. He existed from eternity. An infinite number of years going backwards. There's never been a time when God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Son did not exist. And this verse proves it conclusively. Yeah, everlasting can mean to the end of this age, but going backwards, it means from eternity. Now, one other verse that also proves this conclusively, Leslie. Yeah. We read John 1.1, 1, 1, which is talking about the word, Jesus Christ was with God and was God. Well, verse 3 says, 
still talking about Jesus who came in the flesh, verse 14. It says, about Jesus, all things were made by him, talking about Jesus, the word. And without him was not anything made that was made. Leslie, what that is saying is that every single thing that was created, without exception, even the devil himself, every single thing that was ever created in the history of time was created by Christ. So if Christ was a created being, that would this verse would have to mean he created himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's impossible. You can't create yourself. This says, take all the things that were ever created. Jesus did it all. He, without him was not anything made that was made. So he created everything. He could not have been created because he created everything that was created. He made everything that was made. You follow what I'm saying, Leslie? Right. All right. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, I, I, I like the fact that you have actually, you know, explained from all of these passages. And I was going to pick you up on the word everlasting, you know, and I like the fact that you explained that because, you know, someone could argue that the word everlasting could actually mean for a limited time. And I think you've actually explained that, that you know, it doesn't mean that going backward, you know, from eternity and all of that. Now, um, I know you've debated this issue in the past, and which is one of the reasons why I was particularly interested that you, you come up to this program to discuss it. Now, there are some passages of the scriptures that have been used to prove that Jesus Christ was created. And I want you to address those passages uh, uh, so well and show to us, you know, I want you to, to explain why that passage is will not contradict what you've just said. I mean, you've just said Jesus wasn't created and we have some passages that seems to suggest that he was created. Now, I will first of all want us to address Colossians 1.15. In that passage, the Bible talks about Jesus Christ and it says he's the firstborn of every creature. Now, I am the firstborn of my father, uh, uh, Patrick, and uh, you know that I am the first to be to, to, to come into existence among all of the children that my father actually has. So now, when Jesus is said to be the first one of the create of all creature, why are you telling us that he wasn't created? You know, when the first okay. child of a man is simply the first to be brought forth. Yeah. Because this Greek word firstborn here is not talking about first in time, it's talking about first in position. Okay. For example, I'll give you a human illustration. When we say in America, the first lady, who, what do we mean? Do you know what we mean, Leslie? I know you don't live in the United States, but what do yeah, we mean? Yeah, we, we, we do that. We use that here too. First lady is just a term you use, you call uh, the wife of the president, and that means she's, you know, the first in position among other women. De definitely, uh, that, that's what we... Right, not first in time, because we have a first lady now, Mrs. Biden. She's not the first in time. There's been... I don't know how many presidents we've had, 40-something presidents and first ladies before her. She's not first in time. It's first in position. She's the first lady in position. How about Luke 15, 22? Same Greek word. It says best robe. It doesn't mean this robe was first in time. It means it's first in position, and that's why it's translated best. And let me give you an Old Testament illustration. In Jeremiah 31, verse 9, Leslie, we, it says, For I am a father to Israel. And Ephraim is my firstborn, okay? Ephraim is my firstborn. However, notice, Leslie, from Genesis 48, 15, that Ephraim was the younger. Manasseh was the firstborn chronologically, like you were the firstborn child of your dad, which means first chronologically, you're the oldest. Uh, this is saying in this passage that Manasseh was the firstborn chronologically, Genesis 48, 14, but Ephraim is called the firstborn. What is he talking about there? Not firstborn chronologically, but firstborn in position. Let me continue reading. It says, Israel stretched out his right hand upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, for Manasseh was the firstborn. Manasseh is the firstborn chronologically, but Ephraim is the firstborn in position. He's the one that takes the prime position there. So this word is talking about firstborn in Colossians 1.15, firstborn in position, not firstborn chronologically in time. And so verse 16 tells us the very point that verse 15 is trying to be 
is trying to make, Leslie, every, he's first born in position. Everything was created by Jesus and for Jesus. He is supreme. First born in creation does not mean he's the first created being. It means he is the boss over all the creation. He's the first in position over all the creation. Do you see the difference in the distinction, Leslie? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can see the differences uh, you, 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 you have actually made. And um, what I can deduce from that is that the word firstborn is not used always in the scripture to refer to, you know, like the first child. And even when it refers to the first child, sometimes it doesn't have to mean that because Jeremiah, you cited, is a very good example. How would Ephraim be called the firstborn when in reality, it was actually the second born. You know, we have Manasseh, the first born. So, and someone will have to argue, Ephraim is the first born. So he is the first born, he is the first born. And, you know, we have to accept he's the first born. How is he the first born when he wasn't the first to be born? So uh, I think I get the point that Jesus being the first born over all creation or creature doesn't necessarily mean that he was the first to be created. And the passage you cited earlier, talking about he is before all things and he created all things would also be a good passage to tell us that if he was created, then he probably created himself, which would be funny. And I know most people would not accept that. All right. All things made were made by him. So that shows he was not created. He's first born in position, not in chronological order, time-wise. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, I have another argument here that I want you to address. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. You know, when Jesus was talking, one of the letters to the churches in Asia, he told the church in Laodicea, and, you know, he was telling them, you know, this thing says, you know, him and all of that. And then he got to a point, Jesus said, he referred to himself as the beginning of the creation of God the beginning of the creation of God. Now, the argument is this. If Christ is the beginning of the creation of God, why are you saying it wasn't created? The beginning of the creation of God should suggest that he was the first to be created. So how are you reconciling this passage with the um, statements you've made earlier that Jesus wasn't created? beginning of the creation of God is not saying that Jesus was the first one created, but that he's the source of the creation. He's first in rank, not first to be created. Now, Leslie, being in Nigeria, you probably don't keep up with college football at all. Do you know about Alabama Crimson Tide? And I pull for Alabama football, right? Yeah, you talk about it a lot. So I've looked at it a little bit. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, the people listening to this video in America would know what I'm talking about. Okay. If I were to say Alabama football, begins with Nick Saban. What would that mean? I don't mean he was the very first Alabama football player in history. He played for Kent State. I mean he is the Alabama football team's leader. Alabama football begins with Nick Saban. That doesn't mean he's the first player. It means he's the leader of Alabama football. Let me, let me show you this definition for this word beginning in the scriptures. First of all, it's Strong's number 746, Leslie. And according to Wygram Green, a Bible dictionary I have here in my house, it means authority, rule, ruler. So beginning of the creation of God doesn't mean he's the first created. It means he's the authority, the rule, or the ruler over the creation. He's first in rank, not first to be created. Here's some example uses of this same Greek word, Leslie. How about 1 Corinthians 15, 24? It says, he hath put down all rule and all authority. That's the same Greek word. It's translated rule. Luke 12, 11, And when they bring you into the synagogues and into the magistrates and powers, same Greek word translated magistrates, meaning the rulers of that city or county or whatever. And then Luke 20, verse 20, deliver him unto the power and authority of the government, of the governor. That's the same Greek word. Psalm, Strong 746 translated power there. It means, so this is not saying he's the first created, in, in these passages I have here on my outline here, I, I'm not going to go over them all, but Romans 8, 38, I guess Ephesians 1, so forth, it means principalities or principality. That's how it's translated there. So when it says that Jesus Christ is the beginning of the creation of God, it's not saying he's the first created, but that he's first in rank. 
he's over, he rules all over the creation. All the ones that are creation, he is first in rank. He rules over them. That's what we see by looking at other passages that use the same Greek word and other and the definition for this Greek word, Leslie. So we don't have a contradiction in the Bible. We don't have Colossians 1.15 and Colossians 3.14 saying Jesus was created when we know from Micah 5, 2 and John chapter 1, verse 3, he wasn't created. No contradiction in the Bible. He's not created. These verses are not, are not saying he's created. It's saying in position. It's first in position, not first in time. Okay? Okay. Okay. Like I say, if I say Nick Saban, Alabama football begins with Nick Saban. I don't mean first in time. I mean first in position. Okay? Yeah. That's that's a good example, you know. Yeah, I'm sure people in the U.S. will be familiar with Alabama football. So, I, like I said, I know you talk about it so well. I know that's one of your probably your most loved sports. So I, I looked it up, and you know, I, I, I'm trying to just know a few things about it. But I, I would like to before I go to the next question, I would like to ask you: Are you saying that that word, the word you said, it's strong seven four six, right? Um, are you saying that right. it cannot actually mean beginning? I mean, first in order of things? Is, is that what you're saying? Like the, the literal beginning? Because someone could argue, right. well, someone could argue and say, well, the word can actually mean beginning. So if it means beginning, why can't it mean beginning? You know, do you get my question? Okay. okay. Well, it does mean beginning. But what do we mean by the word beginning? Do we mean first in time or first in rank? Beginning means to start. All right. So does it mean first in time, first in rank? Yeah, the word could mean first in time. Okay. But it just means beginning. It doesn't necessarily mean first in time. It could uh, mean okay. first in some other respect. And in this case, it means first in rank. He created everything. Colossians 1.16. All things that were made by him and for him. He is the ruler over everything. That's the idea that it's trying to get at. Not the first thing created, but the thing that created, the source of all the creation, the one that is the ruler over all the creation. That's the point in both Revelation 3.14 and Colossians 1.15. Mm. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. I think I, think I appreciate, appreciate the answer. Uh, and I'm sure that people are actually listening and you know, considering the arguments that you're actually presenting, the scriptures cannot contradict each other. And um, we cannot just take one passage and then use it to contradict a few, I mean, other passages that talks or speaks differently on the subject. All right, I have a final question for you. And the reason we know it's not talking about first in time, first created, is because of John 1, 3, Isaiah 9, 6, and Micah 5, 2. They prove conclusively Jesus was not created. So whatever Colossians 1.15 and Revelation 3.14 are talking about, it's not talking about first created. That leaves us with the other meaning, first in rank, superior. Go ahead, Leslie, I interrupted you. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. The interruption was necessary. So I was just going to ask you to give us, if you have them, um, other scriptures or verses in the Bible that prove the divinity of Jesus Christ, because this is very important. I personally think that, if anyone says Jesus was created, you are making him less divine. That's what I believe. And I use the concept married bachelor. It's just like someone saying you have a married bachelor. When a man is married, he's no longer a bachelor. And if you say he's a bachelor, what that means is that he's not married. So if you're saying we have a God that is created, then you're basically saying we have something like a married bachelor. If he's God, then he cannot be created. And if he was created, then it cannot be God. Probably, maybe I'm not correct. You, you can correct me on that. But um, give us some few passages that talks about the divinity of Jesus Christ. Let's say I agree with you 100%. When I'm debating like the Christadelphians or the Watchtower folks, the reason they say Jesus was created is because they're trying to prove Jesus is not divine. He's not deity. I agree with you. Just like Mary Bachelor, and I love your illustration example. That's a contradiction in terms. It's a contradiction in terms to say Jesus is deity and he's created. I believe that's a contradiction in terms. But see, this is just one point that's brought up to try to prove that Jesus is not divine. He's just a man. Oh, he was created. But we prove that he's not created, that he's divine. Here are some other passages. We've already looked at five passages that prove Jesus was deity or divine. 
How about Titus 2.13? It says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, this is, says the great God. How do we know it's referring to Jesus Christ? But because it has to be referring to Jesus since it's talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's talking about the coming of the great God. The Father's not coming. Jesus is coming the second time. And it calls him the glorious appearing of the great God in our Savior, Jesus Christ. So God, Jesus Christ is called God by Titus 2.13. He's also called God in Ephesians 2.6. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. See, Leslie, you don't think it would be considered robbery to say you're equal with Pat, do you? We're equal, aren't we? Neither one of us is superior to the other, right? Right. So to say that Leslie is equal with Pat, it would not be robbery on, on your part because we are equal. So when this says it's not robbery for Jesus to be considered equal with God, the Father, that means he is equal with God. And he can only be equal with God, the Father, if he's divine God himself. How about the simple text, Matthew 1, 23, talking about Mary. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So Jesus' name, Emmanuel, means God with us. That means that Jesus is God with us. He's God with us here on the earth. How about 1 Timothy 3.16? It says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Who would that have to be, Leslie? Who was manifest in the flesh? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, of course, we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Jesus, not God the Father. It's God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in the glory. That's got to be talking about Jesus. Jesus was manifest in the flesh. He was preached unto the Gentiles. He was believed on by the world. He was received up to the glory. Now, that's not talking about God the Father. Jesus ascended up to God, up to heaven. That's talking about Jesus Christ. And it says, this is talking about God. God was manifest in the flesh, received up in the glory. So it's calling Jesus Christ God. One more passage, Romans 9, 5. Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Christ is called God in Romans 9, 5. Now, if the Bible calls Jesus God six or eight or 10 times, how could we deny that he's God? The Watchtower folks say, no, he's not God. The Christadelphians say, oh, he's not God. But the Bible says eight or 10 times he is God, but they just don't want to believe it. I mean, Thomas said, my Lord and my God, talking mm -hmm. about Jesus. Nothing can be clearer than that, Leslie. So we've, we've, we've given 10 passages that prove conclusively that Jesus is a deity, God. We've given two or three passages that prove that Jesus wasn't created. These are for the listener's consideration. They need to take into account what these passages say and believe them. Of course, Leslie, we keep an open mind and we're willing to debate and defend whatever we, whatever we preach. Thank you. Thank you for all of those explanations. And um, uh, probably if there is need, we might talk about any other arguments that is usually used along this line. And I would say that if anyone is listening to us and you have questions, uh, you know, you're willing to, you want us to address any question on this, you disagree, please feel free and drop the question in the comment box. And I want to say that uh, Patrick is there in Alabama. Uh, if anyone wants to debate him on this subject, I mean, uh, are you willing to travel to debate it, Patrick? Please, you can speak for yourself. <laughs> well, I've traveled many, many, many dozens of times for debates, okay? And I'm willing to do it again if the opportunity is, is right. Okay. Is right. If the opportunity is right. Okay, so Patrick is willing to argue that Jesus Christ wasn't created and is willing to, you know, do that. So basically, my point is... Uh, you know, you were mentioning two denominations when you were talking, the Jehovah's Witnesses um, and then the Crystal Defines, if I pronounce that correctly. You know, these two sects um, actually believe that Jesus was created and that the essence of trying to prove all of this is because they believe that he is not deity, is not God. I've actually engaged Jehovah's Witnesses, I think, once in the past. That was a long, long time ago. 
uh, and they actually try to prove that Jesus was created. Apart from this group, I have not physically encountered any of them, I mean, who believe this. So uh, it is strange to me when, you know, people try to say Jesus was created and that, uh, you know, is not deity or is deity or something like that. So thank you very much for that. Do you have any closing speech before we end it here? You know, the difference between the watchtower position and the Christadelphian position. Let's say the watchtower folks believe Jesus was created a long, long time ago, and he was in the form of Michael the Archangel at one point. But he was created. The Christadelphians believe that Jesus did not exist till he was born of Mary. Mm. Okay. So they both believe Jesus was created, which is false. They both don't believe in the deity of Christ, but they have a different time on when Jesus' existence started. That's the difference. Mm, okay, so what believe Jesus was created by the time he was created is the difference. But yeah. like you said, what we debated this issue in Atlanta about four hours from me, oh, about fifteen years ago, with a with a guy who uh, preached that Jesus was not deity. So we we in that debate we tried to prove Jesus is God, is deity, and he made a couple of arguments, if I remember correctly, to trying to prove that Jesus was created. But we showed that Jesus pre-existed all of these things mm. before Abraham was I am you know so we gave a lot of passages to show that he's deity that he wasn't created yeah I Anybody think can listen to that debate at my website oh yeah 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 I think the Muslims too you know in an, in an attempt to to relegate the power of Jesus Christ also believe that he's just just a person like us you know it was just a created being. They don't see the divine nature of, of Jesus. And that's one major difference that exists between the Muslims and uh, you know, the Christians. They don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. Neither do they believe that he is the son of God. All right. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. I encourage every one of us to study and look at these issues um, very well. Uh, Leslie, let me mention my website www.bibledebates.info. All right. So probably got about 50 debates of my debates, the audio there. So you can go and listen to these debates, look at my debate charts, including that debate on the deity of Christ. www.bibledebates.info. Go there. That's where I keep my debates for people to look at them and, and, and listen to them. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for mentioning that. Thank you for doing this, Leslie. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye.